Hey YouTube, Bob here. In this 10 year anniversary edition of Nintendo Unboxed, we're going to be revisiting the original Game Boy Pocket and a couple of its prominent peripherals in the form of the Game Boy Camera and the Game Boy Printer. If you're interested in seeing my original unboxing of these items, you can click the link to that in the description for this video. So, here we have the Game Boy Pocket, released in the United States by Nintendo in 1997. And uh, at this time, uh, I had kind of lost interest in Nintendo. I was just about to <clears throat> sell my Nintendo 64 in games to a friend who was interested in it. And uh, that is a decision I regret to this day, of course. But I did that with lots of my, uh, lots of my possessions when I was a kid, as a lot of kids tend to do, because we're always in interested in growing up and moving on to the next big thing. And some of us, we tend to come back to those things later on. And uh, that's what you see here, this Game Boy Pocket, which differs from the one that my brother actually had. I have a brother who's 11 years younger than I am, and he got the green color variation. This, like the Nintendo 64 controllers, were released in a variety of different colors. Uh, this one happens to be silver. And uh, you can see pictured here that it's shown at actual size, trying to give you an idea of uh, comparison to the original Game Boy. Because that was one of the main features of this uh, new iteration of the hardware, that it was a smaller form factor. It had a much improved screen, albeit still not backlit, and it used quite a few uh, less batteries than the original. So uh, this is uh, one of the uh, revised models, I believe. I think some of the very first models did not include a power LED or battery indicator like the original Game Boy did. Uh, this was released without that at first. And then I don't think it was very long after the, the initial launch they did add that. Um, and it was just put in the, in the bezel right here all around the screen. So if we take a look at the packaging, uh, we see the Game Boy Pocket branding, which is very reminiscent of the original Game Boy branding, which we see on the Game Boy, uh, Game Boy Camera and Game Boy Printer packaging here. But they just appended Pocket to the title there. And then on this first long side, we've got a picture along with the barcode. The bottom, we've got the branding along with the sticker sealed sticker. That's how Nintendo was uh, uh, securing their products for retail at that time with a sticker. And then along this long side here we've got uh, the branding in the same picture and then uh, along the top here we've got the branding covered a little bit by the sealed sticker. On the back of the box, very plain. We've got some small screenshots here of Tetris and Donkey Kong Land 2. Tetris would not be a pack-in game anymore, as there was no pack-in game with any iteration of the Game Boy Pocket. I believe that was the case. But they're saying, Game Boy, the world's most popular portable video game system, offers endless entertainment for players of all skill levels with a library of over 400 games. The new compact Game Game Boy Pocket travels everywhere and boasts improved screen contrast for clear, easy-to-see game graphics. Remember, you can also play Game Boy games at home in color on your Super NES using the Super Game Boy accessory. Now that's kind of interest, uh, interesting to me in retrospect, uh, given that uh, this was released in 1997, the N64 was released in 1996, and they are reminding you of a peripheral for the 1991 Super Nintendo Entertainment System. I don't think they ever uh, released anything for the N64 that would allow you to, um, to play Game Boy games on a TV. We wouldn't see anything like that until the Game Boy Player for the, Game Bo uh, for the GameCube in uh, 2003, I think that was released. But the bullet points here say new compact size, batteries included. You still get the batteries, but like in my other unboxing video for the Game Boy, you're not going to see a pack-in game, you're not going to see headphones, and you're not going to see the video link for multiplayer play. But it does boast the existing library of over 400 games for the Game Boy in all different uh, genres, action, adventure, puzzle, sports, and role-playing. But this is just a tribute to how popular this system was the Game Boy, the original one, the black and white or green and green Game Boy, sold gangbusters all throughout uh, its lifespan in the various iterations. So Nintendo's approach of using outdated technology, as long as the games were good, served them very well with this product. 
So let's take a look and see what this Game Boy Pocket looked like. Once you broke the seal, you're able to open the box like so. And gone are the styrofoam trays in favor of kind of uh, cardboard inserts that are fixed. You can't really remove them. It's glued in there or folded in there somehow. But you can see the product in here. So we take out the first bag. We've got the instructions. And then we've got the Game Boy itself. And that's pretty much all you get, except for the batteries. I do have the original, I think they're Panasonic batteries that were included. But unfortunately, like with my original Game Boy, these have suffered the same fate of corroding here. So uh, these are really just kind of nondescript Panasonic batteries. Uh, not even in the original sealed baggie like my original Game Boy. So I probably should just get rid of these. But uh, will I? <laughs> probably not. But don't worry. Like my Game Boy, I do not keep these packaged within the, uh, the original box here. Just so that this corrosion doesn't cause any damage to the packaging. So before we move on to the um, to the hardware, let's take a look at the documentation, which again, compared to its older brother, the original Game Boy, is quite minimal. Don't even think we get a poster with this release here. So let's see what the pieces are. Yeah, we just have an instruction booklet, which if memory serves, it folds out more like a poster than a booklet. And then we've got the consumer information and precautions booklet, which again seems to be more of a poster in several different languages here. I'm seeing French and Spanish in addition to the English. But this is just all the legal things that uh, they had to include with later releases of their hardware. So nothing of real interest here for the consumer precautions. But let's do take a look at the instruction booklet or poster as it were. Very plain, just white text on a black field here. On the back, a little uh, plea to read the consumer <laughs> information and precautions carefully. Ah, nah, no thanks. Never have, never will. But then you've got the official Nintendo seal of quality, as always. So as we open this up here, we can see some bold numbered steps here. So we might as well start with step number one, which would be on this side here talks about all of the features. You got the power switch, LED, extension connector, volume dial, external power supply jack, headphone jack, operation buttons, contrast dial, LCD display, game pack slot, battery cover, and speaker. Everything that was included in the original Game Boy release, except, of course, there some of them are a little bit of a different style, but everything for the most part, I believe, if I take a look at this, is in about the same place. Although I think that, um, let me see here, I've got my original Game Boy. It looks like the contrast dial on the original Game Boy was on the same panel or side as the uh, DC in. And we have a little bit of a change in that the DC in or external power supply jack has been moved to the bottom of the system here. So due to the new internals, a little bit of the, uh, the position or configuration of the external ports had to change as well. So number one's got your overview of all the, the parts. Installing your batteries, the original Game Boy used four AA cells, whereas this new Game Boy Pocket uses just two AAA cells. So quite an improvement there as far as the, uh, the batteries are concerned. And then in step three, using the Game Boy Pocket, how to insert the game with the label facing out, just like before. Big difference here, though, is I think, uh, like with the Super NES, they removed that uh, mechanism where the little plastic piece slid over the notch in the Game Boy cartridge to keep it from being removed accidentally while the power was on. So we'll take a look at that when we see the hardware. If we move here, we've got detailed operations, all from part one still. Caution, do not use the Game Boy Rechargeable Battery Pack, DMG003. Uh, so, remember that re rechargeable battery pack and AC adapter in my last Game Boy video? Well, you can't use that. 
It says the Game Boy rechargeable battery pack cannot be used with the Game Boy Pocket. The voltage is incompatible and the DC plug will not fit in the Game Boy Pocket external power supply jack. Plus it's been moved to the bottom. Not that that makes a big deal, but that is another change. Attempting to use this product with the Game Boy Pocket may damage both units. So, sorry, you can't use this if you already have it. They do, however, I believe, have a different version of the AC adapter that we might see on the back of this uh, instruction sheet. Just like we're seeing the new version of the uh, Game Boy Pocket Game Link. Uh, sounds like they're not calling it the Video Link anymore, which was kind of a strange name for it for the original Game Boy because, you know, it was bringing over the video and the audio, which not really because you still needed to have another game pack for your second player, but I think Game Link makes more sense. But just like the various iterations of USB throughout the years, we see them get smaller and smaller. That's what's going on here as well with this revamped version of the Game Link. It has a smaller connector, which we'll take a look at. On the back side here, talking about some Game Boy Pocket accessories, this is the Pocket Game Link uh, cable adapter. This is used to connect a Game Boy Pocket system with other Game Boy systems for two player game packs. This cable adapter must be used with Game Boy Game Link cable. You will need two of these cable adapters to connect two Game Boy Pocket systems together. So yeah, you don't have that packaged with the Game Boy like you did with the original. There's also the Game Boy Pocket AC adapter, which is no longer a rechargeable battery pack that you could take with you, but I think you're getting some more use and hours out of those two AAA cells than the original four AA cells. So maybe the battery pack wasn't quite as necessary for the Game Boy Pocket. Step six, you've got some parts order form here, just like, uh, just like we saw before. Uh, you can get the AC adapter for $19.95, Game Link for $5.95. So this time you actually would have to either send away for them using this form or find them at a retail store because they weren't packaged in like they were with the original Game Boy. And then step seven, to finish it off here, we have some troubleshooting information. What to do if the Game Boy Pocket does not work properly before calling for assistance? Check these things first. So, that is the instructions for the Game Boy Pocket. Let's take a look at the hardware itself. Which, this is really the only thing of interest included in the box. We've got the Game Boy Pocket Silver Variant. And then for size comparison against the original Game Boy, you can see, wow, it was quite an improvement. Not only in height and width, but also in thickness as well. So uh, you can see on this left panel of the Game Boy, we've got the DC in and the contrast. Here we've traded the DC in for the uh, external port for the game link and the volume slider. And then on the opposing side here, uh, whereas the original had the video link uh, output and the volume, all we have here is the contrast slider. I don't believe this contrast slider has a notch in it. Oh, it does. It does have the notch in it to show you kind of where the middle setting would be. So that is definitely something Nintendo wanted you to keep an eye on to make sure that, hey, is your contrast too far up or too far down? Or is it true that your system is not working? On the bottom, we've got the audio out for your headphones. And now on the Game Boy Pocket, we've got that very, very small port for the power supply, if you were going to use that. On the back of the system, we've got the serial number barcode, which when it was in its packaging, you saw that it shone through a little bit of a window here. The retail workers would have to not only scan the barcode for the product uh, when you were checking out, but they also had to scan the serial number to make sure that uh, what you really bought was you know, on your receipt in case you wanted to return it. They wanted to make sure you were returning the same one. So we've got that along with the sticker with all the model number and pertinent information. Battery cover here with a sticker on it with the Nintendo World Class Service Center number. And then there are the, the, there are the compartments for the two AAA cell batteries. So let's take a look and see how a cartridge would interface. I believe I have a cartridge here. Here's good old Dr. Mario, and we'll put it in the original Game Boy. You can see when you turn the power on, 
that little plastic piece would slide over to prevent you from accidentally taking it out. But they defeated that with the Game Boy Pocket. And as a matter of fact, the cartridge chamber is open for a small portion of the game here. Put it in, label facing out. This whole part of the cartridge is exposed, where in the original Game Boy you saw it kind of um, had these two rails on the side to keep you from being able to grab it like that. You had to use this indentation with your thumb to kind of pull it out. But like I mentioned, when you turn it on, there is no more mechanism here to keep the cartridge in while it's powered on. So all in all, this new Game Boy Pocket was an improvement in every sense of the word. From the improved form factor to the sharper screen and much, much longer battery life on smaller and fewer batteries, this was definitely the way to go to play your Game Boy games starting in 1997. And along with this new hardware, they released some interesting peripherals, which if you think about it at the time, 1997, a camera for something as rudimentary as the Game Boy, that was actually quite impressive. So that's what we're going to take a look at next. The Game Boy camera and then the printer that went along with it to print out the pictures that you took using either your Game Boy Pocket or your original Game Boy. So here we have one of the many color variants for the Game Boy camera. This is the green one. And the packaging sports the original Game Boy branding along the left hand side, letting, know, letting you know you're getting the green one. And it says turn any Game Boy system into a digital camera. On this panel here, just the branding with the camera and its logo. Pretty much the same deal with all of the other panels. And like the Game Boy Pocket, you can see Nintendo was using these stickers to seal it up for retail. And the barcode sticker that was on the actual product shows through a window here that uh, uh, retail workers would scan along with the product code. So Game Boy Camera says, Shoot, View, Play. Turn any Game Boy system into a digital camera. With this accessory, you can shoot photos, doodle on them, add stamps, and even send them to a friend with another Game Boy camera. Shoot, save, and edit 30 different snapshots. Arrange your shots into animated sequences. Trick lens mode lets you flip, stretch, zoom, split the screen, and more. Panorama mode shoots both tall and wide formats. Use the self-timer and time-lapse modes to take shots not possible with a standard camera. Includes four mini-games, Space Fever 2, Ball, DJ, and Run Run Run. You can even put your face into a game. So, Nintendo was always ahead of, the, uh, ahead of its time here. We have all these things and much, much more on a cell phone or a smartphone these days. But, hey, this was a lot of fun to play around with uh, if you were a kid back in the late 90s. And it was even more fun if you got the Game Boy printer to print out your creations on some sort of tape that is akin to a photo booth. And we'll take a look at that after this. But for now, it says Game Boy Printer. Look for the Game Boy Printer accessory when you're ready to print out the snapshots taken with your Game Boy camera. Special printer paper lets you turn your photos into stickers. Sold separately. So let's take a look and see what the camera was all about. Similar packaging situation to the Game Boy Pocket. No more styrofoam. We've got some sort of cardboard inlays here to secure the product. So there's our green camera. And like I said, they had a lot of different color variants. I think we'll see some of those on the back of the Game Boy printer box, or maybe even in some of the documentation here. But we get more documentation here with the camera than we do with the Game Boy Pocket itself. We got the same consumer precautions booklet that eh, we don't care about. We got a free player's guide offer inside for what? The Game Boy camera player's guide? Yeah, I actually have that gives you lots of different ideas for how to use the Game Boy camera and the Game Boy printer here. And of course, they want you to subscribe to Nintendo Power Magazine in order to get it. But right here you can see the red Game Boy Pocket match with the red Game Boy camera. And those colors manifested themselves in a sticker on the front, on the back of the camera module, and then on the whole back side of the game cartridge here that would go into your Game Boy. 
This manual is leagues better than the Game Boy Pocket manual, which was just a poster. This one actually is a booklet in the true sense of the word, and it's in color, or as we see, sort of limited color palette to kind of match the experience you were going to have using your Game Boy camera. But if we take a look at the table of contents, quite a few functions that you would be looking at. Got all the parts and functions, got the camera head. You can rotate the camera. Um, uh, that's if you're going to have it in, uh, that's actually helpful if you were going to use it in the um, Super Game Boy cartridge in your Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Uh, you would kind of use that as a tripod and then swivel the head around and do your uh, pictures that way. Got the lens and the body of the camera. How to play basic operations, letting you know what's mapped to each button on the Game Boy. Getting started, initializing the software and what's going on in all of the menus. Let's start photographing. It gives you some tips about how to get the best results and using the viewfinder screen that would be on your Game Boy screen. Different functions here, how you can add comments and they'll probably get into, yeah, using stamps and such. You can kind of modify your photos make them a little bit more fun. Doodle around on them, put them in a slideshow up to 30. I think 30 is what they said on the back of the box is how much the memory could store in the album that you see pictured there. Paint. You can add your own uh, graphics and illustrations a la Mario Paint. It looks like there's some similar pen or pencil drawing tools there. Adding stamps to them and these actually look better than the Super NES Mario Paint stamps all on the Game Boy. Deleting and copying just some of those utilitarian features. Advanced options, items. Select shoot from the mode select screen and then item. Select self timer or time lapse. So yeah this is for the delayed timing or the time lapse feature which is kind of interesting. You could probably have up to 30 frame animation or time lapse. Magic. You can mirror your pictures, tile them, put them in sequence, add different lenses or filters to them. Panorama, kind of a wide angle. They said you could shoot taller or wider. Creating a face to use in some of the games. You'd have to uh, take pictures of different angles of your face, and then that would probably be applied to a ball sort of thing that would be used in a game. And Nintendo would do the same type of thing with its uh, N64DD Mario Studio games, but of course in color and with better graphics. You can even do doodles. So yeah, you can put your face on the ball character in the ball game, or you can do a doodle instead. You can do kind of a mashup of pictures with combining them. Here's the directions for how to make animations with multiple pictures. Editing the animation. So detailed for what this is. Then here they're showing you how to use the Super Game Boy with the Super NES, which, like I said, is kind of interesting considering that um, the uh, N64 was the console at the time that this was released. Um, but And they're even picturing the old version of the Super NES, not the redefined SNES 2. And then they've got something called Hotspot. A lot of directions for that. How to use the pictures in games. And then the directions for the various games. Like we read on the back of the box, there was Ball, DJ, Looks like, wow, there's even some sort of uh, music editor that's to be used with uh, the DJ game. Wow, this reeks of Mario Paint. <laughs> it's pretty cool. Linking options, transferring pictures, Using the Game Link cable sold separately, you can exchange picture data with others. So if you both had the Game Boy camera, you could swap photos. And then some directions for printing if you had the Game Boy printer. I wonder what these directions have that the Game Boy printer directions do not. This is probably more for the software and then the ones in the Game Boy printer are for the hardware. Any sort of error message you might get. Troubleshooting guide. 
and then your important warranty information with the Game Boy camera. So let's take a look and see how that would interface with the Game Boy Pocket. We'll use it, although it was fully compatible with the original Game Boy as well. But as you can see, you would put it in just like this. And then this is how you would hold it to take pictures. If you were going to use it in the uh, Super Game Boy, you would probably have to swivel the head just like that. And that was also useful for taking selfies before selfies existed. You could have the Game Boy screen facing you, because remember that was your viewfinder for the camera. See exactly how you were framing yourself up in the, uh, in, in the frame there, and then take your selfie using the Game Boy camera. But making that even more fun was the ability to print your pictures, which we're going to take a look at in the Game Boy printer next. So here we have the Game Boy printer, branded with the original Game Boy logo here. Print snapshots taken with your Game Boy camera. On the side here, we've just got some product images along with the logo. On the bottom, we've got that seal that we've been seeing and all the other Game Boy Pocket type of products. And then the picture and logo are kind of repeated on the short sides as well. On the back again, we've got the cutout so that the barcode for the uh, actual serial number of this individual Game Boy printer could be scanned. And it says Game Boy Printer. Shoot, print, stick. Link the printer to your Game Boy system and print out your favorite Game Boy camera snapshots. Special adhesive backed printer paper turns any snapshot into a sticker. The Game Boy printer is also compatible with Game Boy games bearing the Game Boy printer icon. So here you've got a picture of everything that's included. You get the six AA batteries, <laughs> more than the original Game Boy used, the link cable, and then you got one roll of paper. The Game Boy printer accessory comes with everything you need to print from any handheld Game Boy system. It includes universal game link, six AA batteries, and one roll of printer paper. Additional paper sold separately. And then here you see the kind of primary colors plus green that uh, the Game Boy camera was released in to start. There were some special editions. I believe there was a Legend of Zelda edition that uh, had some Zelda-themed stamps to it. Uh, but it says, look for the Game Boy camera accessory and turn any Game Boy system into a digital camera. Then they show you a roll of the tape here, very similar to what you would print out from a photo booth in a mall back in the day as well. So let's take a look and see what's in this package. After breaking the seal, you'd open up the box, and just like all the other Game Boy Pocket hardware, you'd see kind of these uh, cardboard retainer trays holding everything in. And printer, the documentation, and the cable, and the batteries are in there. And I will say that in order to get them out, because they're in this compartment right here, you can kind of see what's going on down there with the batteries. Like my other batteries, there's a good chance they have corroded, but I'm having a hard time bringing myself to break the seal in order to be able to get them out. So I'll have to decide what to do about that when I pack this up after the video. But for now, let's take a look and see what we have for the documentation. We have, yep, consumer precautions. Adios. We've got the instruction booklet, which again has been relegated to black and white, but it is actually a booklet this time. And then the same Nintendo Power ad to get the player's guide for the Game Boy camera and printer. The exact same one that we saw in the Game Boy camera. So let's take a look at the instructions here. Game Boy Printer, got five sections here. First one starts off with all the components that you got. You got your printer, your cable, and your paper. Telling you to look for this badge, Game Boy Printer Compatible. Installing the six AA batteries and loading the paper. Which, by the way, the roll of paper that was included, I have this already loaded. <clears throat> Do not pull the paper out. Got to advance it using the feed button. Probably ruin the internal mechanism there if you did that. 
And on this page, we've got some cautions regarding the printer paper, which apparently it's kind of like a mogwai from Gremlins. There's lots of rules. You can't get it hot. <laughs> you can't get it wet. They also don't want you to rub the paper with metal or put tape on it. That'll damage the printing surface. And it says, for best results, use a new roll of paper within three months after opening the wrapping, which I can attest to. I remember when I put this roll in, it didn't really print very well. So uh, this paper definitely has a shelf life, and I don't know if it's um, a proprietary sort of thing or how easy it would be to get nowadays, uh, but uh, definitely doesn't last forever. It's also telling you that when you want to uh, feed it through again, it's important to have the end cut at an angle like this shown here. Makes it easier to feed through. How to connect to the printer. We'll show you how to use that specialized cable. How to operate. Showing you how to insert a game into your Game Boy. And it looks here like... This looks like the Game Boy Pocket. Yeah, they're showing the Game Boy Pocket is the, uh, the diagram there. How to turn on the printer, have it interface with the, uh, the Game Boy, and how to disconnect it as well. And then all the troubleshooting information, all the problems you might come across, and what to do about them before calling customer service. A lot, a lot, a lot of troubleshooting here. Paper keeps jamming. Wow, that's like over half of this booklet here. So error messages too. There may be some error messages uh, through your Game Boy camera software. Fixing paper jams. Wow, this looks like there may have been more problems than <laughs> functionality. And then you got your warranty and then your parts order form here. Again, you could order several parts. Are they mentioning internet yet? Because this was 1997. Nope, but they are encouraging you to call and have a credit card number ready as well. So instead of mailing this in, you could call and use a credit card to pay. But no internet yet, although it did exist. All right, then we've got the cable, which this is a unique cable. Since the Game Boy printer is compatible with both the Game Boy Pocket and the original Game Boy, it needs to have an end that will be uh, compatible with both of those systems. So you can see... On the right, we've got the original larger video link end, and then we've got the smaller um, game link end that was introduced with the Game Boy Pocket. And then on the one end, just the smaller one that goes into the printer. So if we take a look at the printer, which there weren't any color variants for the printer. Uh, they made this match pretty much the aesthetics of the original Game Boy. So they're kind of covering all their hardware bases there. You could get the camera and all of the color variants at the time of the Game Boy Pocket. And then you could get the printer with the uh, color styling of the original Game Boy, which we have right here. And that'll be the first one that we hook up after taking a look at some of the, the controls here. We've got power left is off on is right and then feed to be able to advance the paper but that'll only work of course if you have fed your printer its six double a batteries so and then the only other thing of interest to show here is you've pushed this little uh lever down and then you can release this uh paper feed cover and then this is the roll of paper, which I seriously doubt would be able to be printed on. It's been out of the package for several years, about 10 years already at least. Uh, so probably doesn't work anymore. Like I said, I don't know how easy it would be to find similar paper that, uh, that still worked. But uh, in order to connect this to the original Game Boy, you would take the link and this gets plugged into the printer. It matches the EXT in, the smaller version of the cable introduced with the Game Boy Pocket. And then for the original Game Boy, you would have to use the larger end here. So if you remove your EXT cover, that would connect like so. And then, of course, you would only connect one Game Boy at a time, but just for demonstration purposes. On the left-hand side of the Game Boy Pocket, you have the smaller EXT port. And then that is how you would connect the Game Boy Pocket. But the end of the cable here that you use would be determined by the Game Boy that you had. So that is how you would print your 
photo creations taken on the Game Boy camera. So there you have the Game Boy Pocket and some of its accessories. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video and will stay tuned to World of Nintendo for lots more like it, especially those in the 10 year anniversary of the Nintendo Unbox series playlist that I'm reshooting several of my earlier videos that, yeah, could stand to have a little bit of an upgrade in the video quality. So I'll have those coming per the calendar that's been on the screen, and I hope you'll stay tuned for those as well as all of the other content that I'll have for you here at World of Nintendo. Until that next one, take care. If you have fed your printer, it's six AA batteries.